Hello and welcome. So this week going to do something a little different because as I mentioned last time, uh, Stormtrooper's in the shop getting his check engine light fixed. We don't know how that could have happened. Uh, but instead of talking about my Challenger, I'm going to talk about all Challengers. In fact, all muscle cars. Because if you're like me and you watch a lot of YouTube or read a lot, you may be coming to the con conclusion that this is the end of the muscle car era for good this time. I know, it's ended like twice before. But, but this is the real thing. Why is everybody saying that? Well, you've seen the YouTube videos. SRT shut down and goodbye and is the SRT gone and the Camaro is dead and the Mustang is dying and oh not, let's not forget the EPA coming down and finding people and making performance mods illegal by the way they didn't make them illegal they were technically already illegal if you violate the emission standards don't take the catalytic converters out when you do your exhaust mods that's what they're saying and then if you read any of the, the, the blogs and the press, the, the muscle car is dead. The muscle car is the end of an era. Mustangs will be gone by 2027. It's the end of the muscle car. Traditional muscle cars will be dead in the decade. Oh my God, doom and gloom. And by the way, the links to all of these things here will be down below. But is it really the end? Well, let's talk about it. By the way, this is where I pull in my day job, which is I teach in a business school and I do a lot of industry analysis. So I am going to do a little industry analysis on the automobile industry, more specifically the high end of the, the muscle car part of the automobile industry. So I'll be pulling all this stuff together. So here we go. Oh, shirt. Sure. Knowledge is power. This shirt is merch from Your Auto Advocate, whose link to their channel will be up here somewhere and down in the description below. They helped me get a great deal on my Challenger through through their advice. It's a, it, they're an entertaining channel, YouTube channel. They've got a website, YourAutoAdvocate.com, where they've got all sorts of tools that can help you out. I strongly urge you to check them out. And they have some cool merch, and so I'm wearing their merch. Because I think they're a great channel. Anyway, back to, by the way, and they also do forecasts and things of car sales in the future and everything. So they're also, uh, do, I've taken some insights from things they've said and worked them into this video. So, what are the external forces driving this change that everybody's talking about as being inevitable? Well... Remember rising gas prices? Well, no, you probably don't because it was many years ago, but I remember. In fact, that's why about 12 years ago, I got rid of my Hummer because of its appalling gas mileage. By the way, I still think it was one of my favorite vehicles I've ever owned. Second, maybe, to Stormtrooper, my current Challenger. But they could be coming back. Now, the Energy and Information Administration... I know, we have, we have a government administration for everything. And it's going to get worse, because that's what Biden's for. Anyway, but here's the projected monthly average uh, retail gasoline prices. And you notice they're projecting them to be relatively flat over the next couple of years. I think this is a huge mistake. And one, one of the reasons is OPEC has already shown signs of not increasing supply when demand drops and, and, and prices. When demand goes back up, OPEC may not increase supply, which will drive prices up. In other words, I believe right here you're looking at best case scenario for gasoline prices. And any of you who have a muscle car with our horrible gas mileage know that there is a reason that people don't like having, well, and also SUVs, although everybody seems to not, not care about SUVs, although, like I said, I traded in my Hummer. What about, speaking of SUVs and trucks, people don't buy cars anymore. Here are, again, from the EIA, the same source as the last uh, chart. Here's the year-over change percentage. Look in 2020. Look at this little chart here over here at the end. Car sales 
are down 59%, whereas truck sales are only down 42%. And if you look at the sales of trucks, and I think this lightweight trucks includes SUVs. And look at auto sales, and yeah. People don't, in fact, Ford is shutting down all car manufacturing. They're only going to, the only car they're going to make is the Mustang. Everything else is going to be a truck. And a lot of other manufacturers are going the same direction because that's where the sales are going. So we got a problem. Here's another, here's another problem that's going to play into the end of the muscle car era. Then probably the biggest one that ties in is the CAFE standards. CAFE stands for Corporate Average Fuel Economy. You've all heard about this. The Trump administration put this on hold, but the Biden administration is bringing it back. And here were, by the way, I believe if you look, these were back in 2014. This is where the projections were, where they were going to go. And you can see that they're talking about by 2022, we were supposed to have cars were supposed to be getting over 50 miles to the gallon clearly these these things have all turned it downward but the pressure is going to keep on to keep pushing it back up and muscle cars damage this severely because again it's corporate average so it's fleet it's all the cars you sell averaged well the more muscle cars you sell the more trucks you sell the worse you're going to do so for your fleet average, by the way, so Ford, I just mentioned going to all trucks, this is going to hurt them in cafe because they're not going to have those nice little higher mileage cars, which help pull down your corporate fleet average, which helps you meet the NHTSA, National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, cafe requirements, which are going to come back to bite a lot of people in the butt in the near future. Then we have the whole concept of carbon footprint just kind of raising back up another level, which is here are what the carbon footprints look like. You want zero, you ride a bicycle. And then, you, well, you, you, you can see. But down here at the bottom there, the SUV solo driver, well, that's also where the muscle car solo drivers go. In fact, muscle car solo drivers may actually have a bigger carbon footprint and possibly the only reason they don't is because a lot of them are not daily drivers. They're just taken out on the track, so they're not driven as many miles, so they don't have as big a far carbon footprint as probably an SUV that's driven a lot of miles every day. But you can see that the SUV and, again, the muscle car will be way out in front of the average car solo driver and then get back up here to the hybrid car solo driver by the way, electric cars, it's still, the carbon footprint's still not zero because the electricity has to come from somewhere. And most electricity is currently, in the United States anyway, made with bad carbon footprint technologies like coal. So the electricity is being generated, which is causing a carbon footprint impact. So even if you drive an electric car, you do not have a you, bicycle. That's your zero carbon footprint. Or, as you can see here, take the bus or carpool. That's how you reduce your carbon footprint. Anyway, but people are going to worry more and more about carbon footprints as we finally come to the realization that, hey, maybe this climate change is a real thing. Oh, and then the EPA enforcement actions. I do not have a separate slide for this because this is, this is all re relatively recent. There have been a whole pile of videos recently where people were, uh, the, the one I showed back, a few slides was just one of the early, earliest ones, but they are going to start cracking down on mods to cars that cause higher uh, carbon emissions. So when you start messing with your exhaust systems and retuning and all that kind of stuff, well, it's kind of a lot of it's always been kind of quasi legal anyway. And most people, you, you, most most of you know, if you tune your car, you may you may void your warranty, and if you take out your catalytic converters, you absolutely void your warranty, and you run afoul of the EPA enforcement actions and can be hunted down and punished like a dog. So. Be careful with the mods. Now, by the way, my mods, I do like under the engine bay stuff. Most of my stuff is carbon neutral. It does not affect my emissions of my car. I'm just making it prettier. Nothing wrong with that. You can still mod away. So go nuts with your rims and your wraps and your stripes and all that cool stuff and bling and 
Yeah, that's all fine. Just be careful, especially with the exhaust system. When you mess with the exhaust system, then the EPA could come knocking on your door. Finally, and probably the biggest nail in the coffin, are, is the falling demand, the falling sales of muscle cars. And I've, you've probably seen these numbers here. I, I've gathered them together. Uh, there's a site, goodcarbadcars.net. It'll be here and it'll also be down below where I got a lot of these sales figures. But here we go, looking 2009 through 2020. By the way, 2009 is because 2008 was when the Camaro and the, and the Challenger came back from the dead. And so that's basically the beginning of the modern muscle car era is roughly 2008. And we can see the Mustang has done fairly well, although it's kind of fallen back down. It's the, it's the star of, of the category. Camaro, okay, 2009, they came back, and as you can see, did okay. But then the 2021 model is probably the last year of the Camaro as we know it. Now, Challenger has kind of bucked this trend. Now, it came back 2009, and then, well, here, let me, let me, let me put some data points on, on this chart that might help you out a little bit. Let's look at the refreshes. So the Camaro and the Challenger were essentially refreshes 2008, right? That's when, when they came back after a hi, hiatus. If they came back after a hiatus, they were refreshes, and the sales for both of them grew fairly substantially. Again, the Camaro wait, you know, tripled, selling almost three times as many as the Challenger. But then, now look at the 2014 refresh. Now, 2014, the Challenger and the Mustang refreshed. And you can see the Challenger, the, the green line, the sales bumped up slightly. The Mustang refresh, just like everybody woke up and said, oh my goodness, I got to go get me a Mustang. And it shot from 80,000 to 120,000 sales. People love that new Mustang. <clears throat> now, of course, most of them bought it the first year, and as you can see, the sales have trailed off, although they're still relatively close to where they were in t 10 years ago. So, not so bad. Challenger, on the other hand, after X 2014 refresh, bumped up and then kind of went flat. Now, look at the Camaro refresh in 2015. Sales continued to decline after a refresh. When you come out with a new version of your car and people go, eh, okay, you're on your way to death. And, and look, I mean, they, they've fallen below Challenger sales figures, which is just kind of the end for them. So looking at all this, I would say things don't look, things look the worst for the Camaro. They don't look that great for the Challenger, and they, but, the, but the Mustang, we already know, Ford has already said it's going to survive. However, we've also seen, I, I don't know if you've seen, if you haven't, go find one of the videos. I'll, I'll probably, I'll stick a link down below. The electronic SUV, ver, the electric SUV version of the Mustang, which is an abomination unto the Lord. I don't know. I, it's horrific. So, is there any good news? Turns out, there is, primarily for Dodge. But, I've been yammering on long enough, so I'm going to stop here. So, now for the first time, this is the first time I'm actually saying this out loud. If you want to see part two, you probably want to click the subscribe button. Now, if, you, if, you're, if you're new, I only put a video up about once a week. It's usually stuff, uh, mods I'm putting on my, my own Challenger, but occasionally stuff like this. But if you want to see the next one, you might want to put, put the, put, hit the subscribe button and click that little bell so you'll be notified. But in about a week, I will put up part two of this where I will talk about the good news, especially for Dodge and Challenger and why it may survive the muscle Carmageddon. Yeah, I know I didn't really, I stole that, the Carmageddon idea. I think I'm the, I may be the first muscle Carmageddon guy. So anyway, so that's it for this one. Come back next time. I will go into, uh, I will talk about all the good news. I have more charts and figures. 
I will cover some new concepts that maybe you don't know about. I'm sure you've all heard of economies of scale, but there's also a thing called economies of scope, and that could be one of the things that saves Dodge. And so I'll see you next time. We'll look at the good news and why it might not be muscle Carmageddon for the Challenger. Have a good week.